If you've been hearing all of the hype about the metaverse for a few months now, but feel completely clueless as to how to actually go about purchasing, owning, building on, and then selling land in the metaverse, this video is for you. We're gonna be going over what it is, the most popular metaverses out there. We're gonna do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to purchase land and other items in the metaverse, how to store it, how to develop on that land, and of course, how to sell the land and make money in the end. We're also gonna talk a little bit in the end about how to identify different opportunities in the metaverse because a lot of people lose money while others make money. You know, something funny about the metaverse is the, the idea or the word has actually been around since 1992 and there was a guy named Neil Stephenson who first coined it. He called it a uh, 3D virtual space, and honestly, video games have been doing what the metaverse does for a very long time. If you're a gamer or you've ever played any 3D video game, you're in some form of the metaverse. The biggest difference, if you ask me, is ownership. So in a metaverse, you can own the land in that digital universe. You can choose what happens in your land. You can develop on the land. You can choose if anyone else can go on your land. You can make money by charging people to use your land. And so we have this 3D virtual land it's been around for a long time, right? This idea in games and stuff like that. But now it's not just owned by one entity that gives you the right to buy a you know, physical copy of a game, come and then play. Anyone can create an avatar and enter the metaverse and anyone can own land, characters, or even objects. Because it's decentralized, it means that no one is controlling it. And that means that literally anyone can be in the metaverse and they can be anyone and there's no one telling them to leave or telling them who or what they can be inside of that metaverse. Now, there's three main metaverses that we're gonna talk about here that are kind of the big ones right now and you've probably heard of a few of them. The first one is Decentraland and we'll show you that on the screen right here. The next one is Sandbox and the third big one that's growing really quickly is called Treeverse. Now, something you have to understand about these metaverses is there is an unlimited supply of metaverses. So each metaverse has a limit, right? Each of these metaverses I just mentioned has a land limit and there's only so much land to go around. And in fact, it's gotten so crazy that some of the land plots are thousands, tens of thousands, or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. But overall, there is an unlimited number of metaverses. So there can be a trillion metaverses out there, right? And that's something you really have to understand is it's not quite like virtual real estate where there is absolutely a finite amount of this because while each metaverse does have a finite amount of land, you could always move on to another metaverse and you may see this in the future as different metaverses get too expensive. You'll see people move on to other ones where things are cheaper and there's an unlimited number of metaversi or metaverses out there and that they can do that too. So first let's talk about NFTs and how that plays into this. NFTs are basically digital ownership over a digital asset. Now what you can see on the screen here is actually an NFT marketplace. You can see right here, I can go here and I can actually purchase Decentraland NFTs, which is everything we just talked about. I can purchase land in Decentraland. I can purchase objects and items and avatars and skins for avatars and clothes and all kinds of things. You can see as I scroll down here, there's actually 97,000 items and a lot of them are plots of land. You can see this is selling for uh, 2.6 ETH, which right now is about $8,000, and that's the, the cheapest piece of land you can buy on Decentraland right now, and as I scroll down, it obviously gets much, much more expensive. So whoever owns this NFT owns that little piece of the Decentraland metaverse, and they can choose what happens there. It's all in their power, right, to choose who and what can come, what gets built on there, everything is theirs, or they can just hold it and then try to sell it down the road. Now, what we do is we actually have to have a digital wallet that can hold this digital metaverse, right? It's a digital asset and we need a digital wallet to hold that. Now, the most common digital wallet is called MetaMask. So you can go all the link down below to metamask.io and all you'll do is click download. Now, what MetaMask is, is it's a Chrome extension wallet. So you'll see when I click to install MetaMask for Chrome, which is exactly what you'll do, then you'll see it adds it to my Chrome. And when I go up here to my extensions, I can click on this one and I now have, I can pin it here, I have MetaMask. I've got a digital wallet sitting in my browser where I can purchase things. So you'll wanna go through all those steps. And the next step is we've got to fund our digital wallet. So you saw on this last one right here, Decentraland costs 2.6 ETH. That would mean that we would need at least 2.6 ETH inside of our digital wallet to purchase Decentraland. Now it's important to note that just like there's a thousand different cryptocurrencies out there, each of these different metaverses often has its own currency. Now here's where things get just a little bit more confusing. Both Sand and Mana, and a, quite a few other cryptocurrencies actually, sit on what's called the Ethereum blockchain, which is probably something you've heard of. That means that you can often go to these marketplaces like OpenSea, 
and you're able to purchase using those currencies or using Ethereum. However, if you want to buy directly from the Sandbox website or interact directly with the Decentraland website, you'll need their currency to do that, which is based on the Ethereum blockchain, uh, but you'll still need to actually purchase their currency before you can go about it. So depending on where you're actually going to go make this purchase will actually depend on what coin you're going to need in order to buy the NFT that represents digital ownership in that metaverse. So you can see right here, if I go to the Sandbox store on Sandbox's website, everything is being sold in sand, which means I'm gonna need to get a hold of some sand token to make this purchase. But you can see if I go to OpenSea and I look at the Sandbox, you can see there's a lot of items selling here and they're selling in Ethereum instead of the actual sand token because OpenSea typically deals in Ethereum. So you'll just need to know and get the right asset beforehand so that you can make this purchase. And we'll need to get that asset into our digital wallet. So you can see right here, we just created this digital wallet and in MetaMask, it comes ready with an Ethereum address and everything ready to go with that Ethereum address right there. Now it doesn't come stocked with Ethereum. So our next step is we're gonna probably fund this with Ethereum. Now we can fund this with Ethereum and then we can buy directly from OpenSea or we can fund this with Ethereum and then we can buy SAND token and then use that SAND token to buy directly on their website. So you'll always need to figure out how to get the right token to make the purchase. So in this case, we've got our MetaMask wallet right here. It has zero Ethereum in it. We're gonna to want to fund it with some Ethereum so that we can go about making that purchase. Now, the way that we would fund a MetaMask wallet is typically through a decentralized exchange. So we're gonna leave a link down below to another site. So the way we go about that is we actually need to create a Coinbase account and we'll leave a link down below to sign up for Coinbase. And Coinbase is a great way to onboard, meaning we take our money, our money from our bank accounts and our real money, and we convert that into crypto. And then from there, we can send it to these digital wallets and all this stuff, and it's very, very easy at that point. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create a Coinbase account. After you've created your Coinbase account, you'll click on that top right corner up there, you'll click on settings, and then payment methods, and you're gonna add a payment method. I'll tell you now, PayPal gives you access to the funds a lot sooner than something like a bank account or a credit card. After you've added a payment method, we're gonna go right here and you can see it's got all these different assets. Now we can go to trade and I can actually type in Ethereum and say, I want to buy some Ethereum. So I'll type in Ethereum right here and you can see it's got Ethereum, just regular Ethereum. We'll click buy and you can see I've already set up my PayPal account. We'll say we want $100 worth of Ethereum. We'll click buy. And now we're gonna get Ethereum inside of our Coinbase account and we're gonna be able to send that Ethereum to our MetaMask wallet where we can now interact with sites like OpenSea or the Sandbox Marketplace or any of those other places. So once we've purchased that Ethereum, we need to get the address in MetaMask for where we need to send the money. So I'll click up there in MetaMask. I'll click on the account right there and copy this number right here. Then I'll head back over to my Coinbase account, which is right here and I'll actually click into the Ethereum and then I'm gonna to want to send or receive Ethereum. I'll put in the $100 that I just purchased and then I'll put in and paste that address that we just got from our MetaMask wallet and click continue. And what that's gonna do is it's actually going to fund and send the, that $100 worth of Ethereum directly to our MetaMask wallet where it'll show up anywhere from five to 10 minutes from now. And lo and behold, after a few minutes, you can see right here, I can click again into my MetaMask wallet and there it is, I've got about $98 worth of Ethereum in there. And I can now start interacting with the Sandbox or Decentraland or any of these metaverse wallet sites. So first let's show you how this would work buying from a secondary marketplace like OpenSea. And then we'll show you how you could buy directly from a website like Sandbox or Decentraland or whatever website actually hosts the metaverse. So you'll have to do a little research, whatever metaverse you're trying to buy into, you'll have to see where the marketplace is for that. Most metaverses, all these big ones that I've mentioned are available on this secondary NFT site called OpenSea.io. We'll leave a link to that down below as well. But you can see when I type in Sandbox, it's there. When I type in Decentraland, uh, it's there. And when I type in Treeverse, which was the other one I was talking about, it's there as well. Now, what we would need to do is we'd find our collection, we'd scroll down, and then these are all of the plots of land inside of that metaverse. You can see Sandbox, I've got 109,000 different things. The cheapest one is uh, roughly about $5,000 right now, which puts it out of place for a lot of people. But you can see I can click into any of these different ones. Now you'll need to dig in a little bit on whatever metaverse it is and figure out what land it is that you wanna buy. But once you're ready, you'll hover over it and you'll click on buy now. Now it's going to need a connect. So OpenSea is a marketplace and MetaMask is a wallet. It's gonna say, hey, can we connect your MetaMask wallet to take funds out from that to make this purchase? We'll say, sure, we are okay with that. 
and we'll get it all connected. And now I'm on this page right here where you can see it has a buy now button for 1.68 ETH or $5,000. My math was pretty close. Now when I click buy now, it's going to again connect to my wallet and it's gonna make sure I have enough funds and then it's gonna pull out the funds. Now, we're not gonna do that for the sake of this tutorial because it costs $5,000 and uh, this is a tutorial video, uh, but all you have to do is you're gonna basically click your, your MetaMask wallet is gonna pull up multiple permissions and say, are you okay with this? Are you okay with spending your $5,000 worth of Ethereum on this NFT? You'll click and sign and say, yes, I'm okay giving access to my Ethereum to OpenSea. And then you'll have to click yes one more time. It'll pop up another thing and it'll tell you, hey, okay, you wanna make this actual transaction for $5,000 or you know 1.3 ETH or whatever it is. And you'll click one more time to confirm and then the purchase will go through. Now, once the purchase has gone through, you'll be able to go right up here. If your wallet has been connected, go to your profile and you'll see it show up right here in your collections. That will now be your NFT, which is land in the metaverse. And in this case, it's the sandbox metaverse. So that's how you would go about the process buying on a secondary market, okay? You would purchase on a coins or Ethereum on Coinbase. You'd send it over to a MetaMask wallet. You go to OpenSea, connect your MetaMask wallet, and then make the purchase inside of OpenSea. Now let's say we wanted to do it the other way. Let's say we wanted to buy directly from the Sandbox site. And you can see on the Sandbox site, I can buy all kinds of things, not just land. I can buy this shield of Verdeva. <laughs> I can scroll down here and you can see there's all kinds of things that I can buy on the Sandbox website. But our wallet has Ethereum. As you can see right here, this is not Ethereum it's asking for, it's asking for the native SAND token. So in this case, we would have an intermediary step where we'd purchase the SAND token. Now for most of these metaverses, we're gonna use a site called Uniswap for this to work. So we'll leave a link down below. It'll take you to uniswap.org and you're gonna click launch app. Now what we're doing here is this is a swapping site, a crypto swapping site. So we're gonna swap this Ethereum that we have for a sandbox token. Then we're gonna head over and we can now start purchasing with our sandbox token. So you can see right here, it says swap. We're gonna to wanna to connect our wallet. We'll do the same thing that we just did. Give it permission to view our wallet and connect it to our wallet. And once we do so, it'll give us the two coins that we wanna swap, Ethereum being the first one. And then for the second one, sometimes it'll pull up when you just type in sand. And in this case, it did. Other times, we will have to go to coinmarketcap.com. And you can see that right here. This is a site where you can get all of the information for each individual crypto. We're gonna type in sandbox. You can see it's gonna pop up sandbox right there. And then what we need is a contract address, meaning what address do we need to interact with in order to purchase sand? You'll go right here, make sure it says it's an Ethereum address, click copy address, go back to Uniswap and we'll paste that address. And it pulled up sand just like we just clicked. So we'll go here now and type in that sand. And it now says, okay, you've got this Ethereum. Would you like to swap it for sand? And we're gonna say, yes, I would like to swap my Ethereum for sand. And it looks like 0.01 Ethereum actually equals 10 sand tokens or sandbox tokens. So we would click swap right there, click confirm swap. Once again, we're gonna connect our wallet, right? It's gonna double check that we're okay with this swap. It's gonna double check that we're okay with this fee. In this case, I'm not okay with the $40 fee for a tutorial, so I'm gonna click reject, but you would click accept, and then the sandbox tokens would show up inside of your wallet. Now, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go up to your MetaMask wallet right here and you're gonna to wanna to tell it to look for the sandbox tokens. So you're gonna to go to assets right there. You're not gonna see your token and you're gonna say import token, custom token, and then paste that same address you just used to buy and it'll say, oh, sand. And you're gonna say, yes, import that token. And now it knows to keep an eye out for sandbox tokens because you've told it that you purchased some. There's a lot of currencies out there. MetaMask doesn't know all of them. So you sometimes need to tell it what to keep an eye out for. So our MetaMask wallet will now have sand and we can go back to this sandbox marketplace right here. And we've got all these different things and we'll follow the same process now that we just did with OpenSea, except now we're on sandbox. So I'll click into something that I wanna buy. I can click buy now. I can connect my MetaMask wallet just like we have been with everything else we've been doing here. I can click next, connect. Now, depending on if it's a central and Treve or Sandbox or any of these other ones, it may or may not ask for an email. It looks like it does want one on this one. Once you've created your account, we'll click buy now again, and you can see it's gonna pop up all this stuff. It's gonna let you know that's 126 sand tokens, which I believe lands us at about two to $300. We'll click continue. And then we would just do the same thing. We'd accept the transaction in our MetaMask. We'd say, hey, I'm okay with sandbox.game, this website, right? Taking out the sand token that I now have in my wallet. And then it would make that swap for us. In this case, it's saying, hey, you want more, you need more sand. And I'm saying, I don't wanna spend $300 on a shield of Verdeva. So I will not go about that. But that is the process for purchasing 
basically any NFT land in a metaverse. Okay, so you need to understand that's how it all works. Land is bought in the form of NFTs and those NFTs are typically bought with crypto. And the way it all is done is by working these exchanges with this MetaMask digital wallet. That's where it's all being stored. Now, once you've purchased it, it's sitting inside your MetaMask wallet. That's what has access to that uh, particular piece of land now. That's what's proven as the owner of that land. So you can go back to sandbox.game or whatever metaverse you're currently in, and you can usually go to your profile. In this case, we'll click on profile, and it will show you inside of your profile right here what you currently own. So right now, I don't own anything, but you can see it would say, hey, you have this land, or you have an experience, or you have you know, this shield of Ver 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 Vera, or whatever the shield was that I was looking at. And if you own any of these, then you can do the exact same thing backwards, where you would click into the asset you own, click sell, and then your wallet would pop up, and it would say, are you okay selling this? And you'll say, yes, I'm okay selling this, and you'd go about that exact same process. So I'll be honest, this felt like a fairly complicated tutorial. Uh, primarily because buying land in the metaverse isn't one metaverse. There's a lot of different metaverses and each one has its own unique websites, each one has its own unique things. But the general idea here is exactly what we just showed. You're going to need to get a MetaMask wallet, you're going to need to fund the MetaMask wallet, then you're gonna to need to either purchase on the secondary site like OpenSea, or a site, the actual primary site like Sandbox or Decentraland, and then it will be stored inside of your MetaMask wallet until you're ready to sell it. Hopefully we haven't confused anybody too much and hopefully we've all learned something here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you like learning crypto without fluff, without hype, and with a little bit of honesty in there, click subscribe. Thanks for watching.